In this video, I'll be analyzing data from LendingClub.com. Uh, we'll be primarily interested in looking at the problem of empty entries in our CSV file. So to get started, what I'm going to use is Pandas. Uh, that's the Python library. I'm going to load my data from disk. It's a CSV file that's about 43 megabytes in size, so it takes uh, two seconds to load the data. Since it's 43 megabytes, I'm kind of curious about how big it is. So I'm going to run the shape uh, attribute against that data frame, and I find that it's 42,538 uh, rows by 145 columns. So pandas by default won't show all of that data. It's trying to be safe. And so I'm going to tell pandas very explicitly, show all of the rows, uh, and at most 999. So I'm going to set the upper bound there. And then I, I like to start out by looking at the top of my data frame just to see what it looks like. But since there's 145 columns, I'm going to transpose that display. So that's what the, the head is the top four rows, and then the dash T is the transpose operation. So when I run that, what I get is the columns on the left hand side here, and then the, the first row, uh, and the second and third and fourth rows as uh, columns in this view. Right, so that's a pretty large amount of information visually to scroll through. So what I'll be using repeatedly through this notebook in Jupyter Lab is on the left hand side there's this blue bar that shows up if I hover on the left hand side. So I will click on that to collapse the view and then it's hidden by these little three ellipses. And I can click on that and restore the view of the data. So I'm going to hide this view for now. Alright, I want to clean up my data by identifying uh, columns that are empty. So the way I'm going to do that is look at the data frame and ask, is an entry null? Is it empty? Is it not a number? And I only want to see the, the first few rows of that, so I'm going to use the head command again. So when I run that cell, uh, I get back a data frame of just the first five rows by default, and then a true or false depending on whether there's a NAND present. So let's look at the, I'm gonna go up to the head of our original data frame here. So the column of ID and row zero is true, which indicates it is in fact a NAND entry. So ID is NAND, that shows up in my is null output as a true statement. So I wanna count how many um, true values exist in a given column. And so the way that I can do that is run sum on the data frame which shows a bunch of Boolean values, true or false. And the reason I can run sum on Boolean values is because the word true corresponds in one to Python, and uh, sorry, in corresponds to one in Python. And so I can count how many true values there are. And I see that the ID column is true um, and, and that corresponds to a sum of 42,535, 42, which is pretty close to the number of column uh, number of rows. So that's almost all NANDs except for three of them. The member ID, that's completely a set of NANDs. That's the whole column is all NAND, not a number of entries. Um, so we can sort of see here that there's some numerical patterns. Like there's a lot of threes. And you know, just like reviewing the data, there's a lot of columns here that are also all completely empty. So those will be convenient to draw. All right, so I'm gonna scroll through just to show you like there's a lot of data in the columns appearance, but then if you look at the number of NANDs, those columns are mostly empty. So I'm gonna leverage the fact that I happen to know how many columns there are, and I can count how many of those are empty. Uh, how many rows are empty. And when I do that, I can ask the question, is the column completely composed of not a number entries? And so when this number is the same as the number of rows, 
And the answer is going to be true. So this is a comparison of, is this number the same as that number? And what I get back is a series. So the series is similar to a Python list, except a series has an index. And the index here, in this case, is a string, which is the name of the column. So this is a series output comparing whether that count of not a numbers is the same as the number of rows. From this view, I realized that the member ID column is completely empty. And so that is a column that I'd want to drop. So I'm going to collapse this and we'll go on to our next cell. So I'm going to write a, I'm going to save the output of that Boolean comparison that we made just to show you what I'm doing here. I have that same comparison. I'm going to save the output of that to a series. And that series is very descriptively called the series of Boolean indicating whether the column is entry. Column is empty. So with that series, I can loop over the index and values. So again, my index is the column name. And the value in my series is that Boolean true or false statement indicating whether it's empty. So when the column is completely empty, if it's true, then we're going to want to drop from the data frame that column. And we're going to do it by column. And we're going to do it in place. So that we'll modify the data frame in place. This is a very, basically looping over the columns and dropping the columns that are completely empty. So I'll run that cell. And then after that runs, the new shape of the data frame is the same number of rows, but a much reduced number of columns. So I'm, I've removed 81 empty columns. So whether that helps or not in the long, in the big picture is sort of uh, not the objective here. What we've shown is we can use Python to programmatically clean up our data. So I want to route this sort of the long route uh, to get to the sort of example that there is an alternative command called drop na, which effectively does something very similar, where we can just specify that if the entire column is composed of nands and they're null values, then we're going to uh, drop those columns and we'll do it in place. So this is that same sort of function that we had up here, the same functionality that we had in this uh, cell in one command. That gets the same result, so no changes for the loans data frame. If we remind ourselves that there's 42,000 rows in our data frame, we can leverage that and count the percentage of our emptiness. In other words, like how sparse is a given column. What the above sort of walkthrough did was eliminate all the columns where that ratio is 1. So here in this uh, series, what I'm seeing is the column and its sparseness. If a column is close to one, then we know that it's almost all nans, except for a few actual values. And columns that are closer to zero are columns that have almost all their values, except for a few nans. So this view of the, of the series is in the same order as in the data frame. But since we have this list here of numbers, what we really want to do is sort that list so that we've uh, got all of the sparse entries together, all the sparse columns that are grouped together. So I didn't know how to do that, but I knew that there was a sort operation. So I just needed to figure out how to do a sort of a series. So when I Googled that, I found a command called sort values. And then I can run that against my, my series. And what it does is it sorts all of those numeric entries. So we've got the same set of columns on this side, but now these are grouped together uh, by, in order. The reason that's helpful is we can sort of pick out that this column is almost all filled except for a few entries. And if we scroll down to the bottom here, there's a whole bunch of, of columns that are almost uh, completely op occupied except for a few nans. So that's sort of like a, an interesting observation now that we've sorted the, the ratio. 
So I keep seeing the same number of 0 0.000071. What is up with that? If we measure the count of how many NANs are in a column where that percentage is, the sparseness is 0.0071%, what we find is that's three rows. So the number of entries that are null counting up the number of true values, that's three. Okay, so we notice that there's a lot of columns that have just three NANs. Okay, so now we, we have an issue, potentially. So let's take a look at what those uh, data frame, what the data frame looks like where we have uh, NANs in the total rect int column. So staring at this, what we see, we look at this whole data frame is all NANs except for the ID column. So that's interesting, right? And if we remember, that sort of sticks out because at the top of this uh, sorted list of column sparsities, the ID column was almost all NANs. And I would be willing to bet that the only entries that are in the ID column are these same three. And we see that this text here uh, looks like it quite, doesn't quite belong in an ID column. So there was, was probably some sort of mistake, whether it was human generated or because there was a program mistake. Uh, my speculation is that the ID column shouldn't actually contain this text. So there's only three rows where it shows up. There's some sort of mistake. All right. So that's cool. Let's validate that the ID column contains um, the only text in those three rows. So the way we can do that is we can count how many NANs exist in the ID column, and there's 42,535. And as you might recall, the number of rows is 42,538. So in, it is in fact the case that the ID column is all NANs except for these three rows. And for a whole bunch of columns, all these other uh, columns are NANs for those three rows. So basically what we want to pick out is the fact that we want to get rid of the, the ID column and all the associated rows that are causing us uh, to have this little mismatch. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to start with the fact that I know that this total rec int only has an entire column uh, NANs where, so I have to go back up here, so that a column with just three NANs, the locations of those are the ones we care about. So if I run this command, uh, what I get, I'm going to hold this out for a little bit. I can look at that same data and I ask which entries are NANs. And so again, the ID is false, 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 because those actually have text in them, but everywhere else is true. So we really want to make sure that before we get rid of anything that all of these entries are true, and these are the only false entries. So we want to make sure that we're cleaning appropriately. So what I did was I said, well, in this sort of rectangular shape of three rows and 64 columns, I would expect that if you summed up all those true entries, it would be three under the shape of the of the rectangle, or the area of the rectangle. So what does that mean? I can count uh, how many null entries there are. So that'll be summing up all the true entries in this data frame. There's 189. And if you compare that to the actual size of the data frame that we're, the subsection we're looking at, it's three by 64. So that's the size of the data frame. So three by 64, that's 192. So what we've just done here is a little bit of math to validate that the only uh, text in this entire subsection is just in the ID column, those three entries. So we, now we're feeling pretty confident that if we wipe out uh, this ID column and these three uh, rows, then we'll be safe. We haven't uh, unnecessarily eliminated any data. 
I'm going to reuse um, the approach that I showed earlier where we're going to drop the ID column. So that's this first line. We'll drop that entire column. And then next, we'll drop all of the rows where everything is NAND. So before the operation, we had the uh, original number of rows and 64 columns. And then after we dropped the ID column and the empty and the rows where everything is NAND, then we have three fewer rows and one fewer column. So that is success. We, we've got now the loans 2007 is clean as far as all empty rows and all empty columns. Uh, so if we had uh, been a little bit uh, lazier, we could have done skipped all the work I just showed you and simply dropped all of the empty rows and empty columns and gotten this quick operation, two lines to do the same thing, but we may have missed sort of the nuance of catching this index column, the ID column, and the, the empty rows. So this is the much quicker way of just drop everything that has either a row of empty entries or a column of empty entries. So we'll just show what that looks like. It gets a similar result, but it doesn't catch the sort of nuances that we were talking about usually good enough to get started. The other thing that I like to look for is columns that are completely redundant. So a column that has all the same entries is not going to provide us any useful information. So we can see which columns, after we've done our cleaning, have the same value. And it turns out in our large data set, quite a few columns have everything the same. So we can take the same approach that we did earlier, where we were dropping uh, columns from a for loop. And so we'll run this and we'll drop uh, those 10 columns that had redundant information. And the last thing I like to do, um, now that I think I have relatively clean data, is to look at the unique entries, the most common entries that are unique in every column. So this is the function that I use. And then when I run that, now that I've cleaned things up, um, I have the, those three columns that were left in uh, for the ID. We, we now know the story of those. Those only appear once in the entire data frame. And then the next column is called loan amount. This is apparently how much money was being loaned to each client. So it turns out in the analysis here that $10,000 is the most frequently uh, referenced amount in our data, coming in at 3,016 rows where it appears. The next most common entry for the loan amount column is $12,000 and, and so forth. So here I've set, I'm just looking at the top five uh, most unique results. And then this is, uh, so something that might be interesting is the, the funded amount and how that compares to the loan amount. You can get sort of a pretty quick understanding of what these columns contain um, by using this, this function here to, to look at the stats per column effectively. Okay, so I won't go through all of these, but this is a very quick way of understanding what your columns contain now that we've cleaned up the data. There's more cleaning to be done. I'll leave that for another video.